What's really important in um, this project uh, is the, to really make the golf course uh, really what it was when my father designed it, but really enhance it to today's standards. And this is Steve Crotty, who's the bulldozer operator and the shaper and the artist that's creating this wonderful green right now. This is the 12th green. Uh, he's worked with me on several projects, even one in Japan. And uh, I think he's, he's a major component to this whole restoration operation. And I think we're very fortunate to have him here. Me and Reese have got this mindset that we think the same. And a lot of the times all we do is I'll call him on the phone or he'll show up and he'll go through my thoughts and his thoughts. And somehow we come up with an excellent product when it's done. We just click. This is a very unique green, uh, a great hole for the members. Um, it has a side slope to the fairway, which makes the drives uh, not go quite as far. And this has a small section in the front, which is easiest to access. And then we've taken the green farther to the left. We pushed it over here. We pushed this portion over here. Uh, now it's, it's gonna be a bunker on the right side of the fairway. Uh, so you have to flirt with a bunker to have the best angle into the screen because it's on a diagonal. Uh, and it really has a section down there which has a backstop to it, and then has a lot of contour in the backside, the larger portion. So you're gonna have to really think about every day uh, where the pin is before you really approach the, uh, the hole. By shifting this over, which Steve did yesterday, we, we're, we made the change yesterday, uh, the bunker then moves this way and we have a, a fairway slot going between the two bunkers on the outside. And then that portion of the green never existed before. So you really can approach the green right here for, through the center or go for the tongue on the left with a fairway approach, which makes it a very unusual, unique hole. I don't think there's any par uh, five uh, green that I've done before that I've seen like this one. It's a very cool, it's gonna be a cool green. You know, cause that bunker used to set up farther. I shoved that one way back, pushed this one up. So we're gonna have 40, 50 feet in there where they can actually run a ball. And that's actually your second landing area. You know, really. So it's going to be a pretty unique shot. It's going to, we're challenging these guys. These guys, we want them to think about their shots now because they've been playing this for so many years. They know every shot that they did. Now they're going to have to think about their shots. Well, if I shoot over here, I can't get over there. Or if I shoot there and the pin's there, I messed up, you know, so it's... So um, this is the um, probably the easiest hole location to access. Uh, but if you get long, you're going to have a tough coming down. Oh, yeah. But but the grade is going to really get a little bit slower uh, toward the front portion. So a lot of thought goes into this. Uh, but just like now, we're putting a lot of thought into it. But you guys are going to have to put a lot of thought to it oh, into it every time you play yeah. this hole. This is uh, a great number 17 hole. It's uh, challenging. We're putting a bunker on the left to really make you hit it right and stay away from the out of bounds. We've opened up this throat to the green on the right side substantially. We've tilted it from right to left so the ball will kick in when the uh, ball comes in on the ground. The green contour is spectacular. Uh, we have a little terrace in the back. We have a wider portion here. Uh, when you hit out of the bunker, you won't be going into the water uh, like you did in the past because we've leveled out this area. Uh, the way this green contour works with the terrace in the back, if you play down the middle and you want to get to the tongue on the left side, it'll feed down that way. So again, uh, on this hole, it's going to be very important for you to really think about your approach shot depending on the hole location. Uh, you can see the modern construction technology with the drainage we're putting in the green. Then we put a gravel layer on top of that. Then we put a sandy mix on top of that. It's uh, the USGA approved method of building greens today. And this green will be sustained for years to come because of this construction method. The bunkers will be lined. Uh, that, that means the sand will be firm and uh, it'll be consistent and the soil will not contaminate the sand. 
So a lot that we're doing today is the technology my father, Robert Trent Jones, didn't have at his disposal when he built this golf course in the 60s. Right, so seven is a short par five, plays downhill from that elevated tee, and then the second landing area, which is kind of between us and what you can see, the bulldozer down there, had a pretty severe pitch from right to left, uh, and along with a, a bit of a ridge on the right. By regrading that, lowering that right side, we're able to reduce that slope where the ball stays in the landing area as you play up to the green. That whole regrading continues all the way up to tie into the front of the green. The bunker and the big lift that used to be there has been restored back to the elevation it used to be, and the entire perimeter of the green now ties the way it should to the whole surrounding. What you're seeing here on the green is really two greens in one. Uh, my father, Robert Trent Jones, really liked to have small targets within a large target uh, to make you have to hit the ball accurately. If you hit this section, you have a birdie putt. If you hit that section, you're gonna have a tough time two putting. So again, you're gonna have to really hit the precise shot. It's not that difficult. Got a large, higher terrace there, a lower terrace here. Uh, and I think uh, you'll find that a lot on this golf course because the reason why El Caballero is such a highly regarded golf course has really been its green contours and green angles and the way, the way you can put in the pin positions in different locations and really change the character on any given day. So we're maintaining that and probably even enhancing that. And I think my father would be looking down on me and saying, kid, well done. <laughs>